Hey, it's Heather, and welcome to another adventure in gardening. So many people will consider gardening to be a hobby. Myself, however, I consider gardening to be my life purpose, my, my driving force, my goal. Um, and so it's like my job, it's what I do. But I do have a hobby. There's a little part of gardening that I consider to be a hobby, and that is the wonderful magical world of the monarch butterflies. So I wanna share some stories with you today about why I work, I work really hard to get the monarch, it's like, you know, little landing flags on the ground to get them to come and complete part of their life cycle in my garden. So I love monarch uh, butterflies, their life cycle. I love everything about them and I wanna share some stories about them today. Also, I will be sharing with you how I do cold stratification for the milkweed seeds. So if you're here just to get that information, I will put um, the minutes right here where you should fast forward to go to the cold stratification. But you're gonna miss out on some really gorgeous photos uh, if you like, if you like, if you love monarch butterflies or monarch caterpillars, you got to see some of these photos and videos. It has been such a treasure, such a joy for me to, um, to be able to participate in their life cycle. So stay tuned. People, people, boys and girls, children, come closer, come closer to hear the stories, the stories of mystery, of drama, of intrigue, of suspense, of all of these kinds of things and so much more that is the world of the monarch butterfly. Once upon a time, not all that long ago, okay, maybe it was a little long ago, but it seems like yesterday, there was a little girl who loved nature and who loved being outside and loved critters. And her parents asked her, little Heather, what is it that you wanna be when you grow up? And little Heather said, someday I want to be a butterfly catcher. And her parents laughed and laughed and laughed. And then the years went by and big Heather found herself out in her garden and she was watching the butterflies and collecting the caterpillars. And she thought to herself, oh my goodness, I am a butterfly catcher. And she lived happily ever after with her butterflies in her garden. So, uh, so true story. I, um, I really did tell my parents when I was growing up that I wanted to be a butterfly catcher because I really didn't know what else I wanted to be. Um, and so that was my blanket answer for a long time. So um, it's funny though, because a couple of years ago I was out in the garden and I was scouting for monarch caterpillars, which I'll tell you why I scouted for them in just a moment. Um, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to call my mom. I really am a butterfly. I'm not, not a butterfly catcher. I'm a caterpillar catcher. Um, kind of the same thing though. So when, when we first moved here, and there was a lot of woods, and as far as the, um, the insects went, or the, the beneficials, the pollinators, we had a lot of termites <laughs> we had a, a lot of spiders now i've i spiders and me i don't want to ride elevators with them necessarily but i have a, a, a respect for them i know that they're here to do a job but um as far as like the good bugs that eat the bad bugs we didn't have a lot of that going on it took a it took years of me not using any pesticides to get the ladybugs and the praying mantis, uh, the beneficial wasps to all show up. It wasn't, an, you don't just plant a garden and then they show up. That's not, I mean, we would love it if it did work like that, but it didn't. It took, it took a long time, a lot of patience on my part. So, um, and as far as the butterfly population, uh, same thing, I, they just weren't around. I, maybe we, I would see them come through really quick, but they have to have a reason to come to your yard, whether it's a, a swallowtail or a monarch um, a butterfly or any kind of other kind of butterfly. They have to have a reason to stick around. So it's either going to be food 
or it's going to be a plant that they lay their eggs on okay so I started planting these plants and it took forever I'm trying to think I think it was three it was four years ago that um, that the monarch butterflies actually started laying their eggs on the milkweed that I had and I was so excited but by this time I already had an army out in the garden working for me okay so four years ago I already had an army out there I had the the wasps the um, the praying mantis I had ladybugs I had lace wings um, you know everything lots and lots and lots of spiders okay so I've got this team out there and the birds you know we're all working together and we're doing this organic gardening thing and and then lo and behold I would check I for years I checked the milkweed looking for that little tiny dot to show up for um, for the egg of the monarch butterfly monarch caterpillar and then they started showing up and then I started seeing those little tiny beautiful little caterpillars and then I started not finding them and I started finding pieces of them and I started to, I'm like oh my gosh you know um, my, my point of this whole video is to tell you my experience with uh, with having the monarch um, butterflies here because if you go online you'll it says or if you start doing any reading the monarch butterfly by the way is the, the most researched um, type of butterfly okay they have a lot of facts all right but I don't I can tell you about experience because they tell you that everything that nature knows that because they eat the um, the milkweed that they're poisonous but I don't think that message gets relayed to everybody okay because yeah I could not believe the things that were um, killing eating the baby monarch caterpillars and then breaking into like chrysalis and I mean yeah so things want to eat the caterpillars there are also parasites and there are pathogens okay they can get like a disease or, or, or I don't even know if it's a virus or a disease but yeah so there are a lot of things bad that can happen to the monarch butterfly now you can find lots of facts on on the monarch butterfly okay we all know they are amazing right that they travel like so I am east of the Rockies so my monarch butterflies are going to um, stop they're going to go back to Mexico that's where they're going to overwinter that's amazing all right so we know that fact and we know that they they know where to go and they know when to go right but um, a lot of things that we don't have all the information on them still um, and so my goal was so all right where are they? so my my goal was to help them along a little bit so now I've planted all of this food for them and then I planted the host plant for them to lay their eggs on and then um, they're being eaten right so so here's what I did this is how I solved it and this was so fascinating for me to do and I I encourage anybody who who wants to participate in um, in helping them this is a really easy thing to do so I would go out every single morning and I would scout and I would look for the little baby um, caterpillars and I would bring them inside and I have a little enclosure all right so you have to have you have to have some gear all right I have a little enclosure that I would put the milkweed plants in vases or the year two three and four I actually planted my own um, milkweed plants which that's why I'm going to do the cold stratification um, the plants are specifically so that I can have a plant to put in my enclosure and let the um, monarch uh, caterpillars chow down that's all they eat is milkweed that's all that they want to eat is milkweed okay so you have to make sure that they have plenty of food to eat all right 
Now, weird things started happening that I didn't understand and I couldn't find the answers to at first. So they, when they are baby caterpillars, when they're caterpillars, I mean, they start out little, they're babies, okay. They are going to shed five times, all right? And so each time it's like, you know, the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> and they, they shed their old skin and they've got new skin underneath. When they are getting ready to do this in an enclosure, okay, in an enclosure and outside, this is why my sister, you know, she was like, why don't I see my caterpillar anymore? I'm like, because your caterpillar needed a quiet place to go to so that it could shed its skin because they will withdraw from their food source. This is what I have witnessed, okay? <clears throat> they withdraw from their food source and they become very inactive and very quiet for <clears throat> hours, all right? And then they wiggle out of their skin, all right? <clears throat> I the process is, is absolutely amazing to see them do this. So they become quiet and they shed their skin and then they go back to eating. Now they really, really, really like to eat. That They don't call them hungry caterpillars for nothing because they just chow down. So if you have too many caterpillars in your enclosure, which this has happened to me, some of them are actually like, oh, yeah, I'm out of here. And they will just take off, all right? So you got to make sure there is enough milkweed for them to eat. Another little funny thing that, um, I, and I'm totally reading into this, I watched them do this thing that I would sit there and I would talk <laughs> too close to them and they would rear their little heads like they were like, or something so I don't know if that's a self-defense mechanism that they're doing but it's just something that I noticed and it's it's kind of funny to watch them because if you have an enclosure with like 10 of them in there and you and you talk or you make a noise they all rear their heads like they're like little dinosaurs or something like that so it is important not to touch your caterpillars if you decide that you want to have a hand in, in helping them along do not touch them all right, they're going to um, do their, their shedding thing and they're going to eat and then there's going to come this day where they're going to find the highest spot that they can find and in an enclosure, it's the top of your enclosure. If your enclosure is open, like mine is open, I have found them on the window sills. They're going to go to the highest spot that they can find to form their J. Now their J is when they hang from their, their rear part Okay, they, uh, they had make their, <laughs> this is me making silk. Um, they make their silk <laughs> and they hang um, from, the, um, from the top of something and then they form a J. And watching the next thing that they do is absolutely amazing. And I liken it to uh, wrestling out of a wet pair of jeans and then your face falls off because that's what happens. It's just like, and then it's done and then they're solid. So absolutely a miracle I think they're like little miracles because they go from this solid little being to liquefying to something with wings um, now the next thing that I do after so it's they're gonna feed for two weeks they're going to be a chrysalis for two weeks the chrysalis is that pretty little jewel little green thing um, that they form into and you'll see that kind of wiggle every once in a while um, and then they will take and, and it becomes clear. So it goes from green with like jewels on the outside. I, I think it looks like it has like little gold, um, little flecks on it and, and it starts to get clear. And this is when you know that you gotta be on alert. It's not time to go grocery shopping. You gotta stay home, okay? Because they're gonna come out and when they come out, they need to dry for a little bit. So you do have some time. So if you need to go to the store, you can run real quick. So um, they're going to come out, unfold themselves, which is a miracle to even watch them unfold themselves. And then they're going to dry. And then this is what I do. I offer my finger to them and they always take it. And then I walk outside and I protect them from the wind as much as I can. And then I just open my hand and let them go and I yell happy birthday because it is just, it's such a wonderful thing. 
So um, that is why I love to plant for the pollinators and especially for monarch butterflies. So I start milkweed plants every year for the sole purpose of feeding the baby, uh, the monarch caterpillars. Um, at the end of the season, so I will put them, the plants in their enclosure, let them strip it down to nothing, and then I'll rotate the plant back out. And most of the time it will just get new leaves on it and then I can just rotate them in and out, um, you know, for the rest of the season. 
at the end of the season, if the plant is still alive, I will plant it in the ground. All right, but um, so I have plenty of milkweed in the ground already though. And that's where I got my seeds from. Um, you can totally buy milkweed seeds online. Um, most places will carry uh, you know, a variety of milkweed plants. So um, I'm going to show you how, how I do cold stratification in the refrigerator. I'm going to take one of these off. All right, now I'm going to, I'm going to go through the whole process because you're probably not going to find um, a milkweed pod at this stage, all right? If you buy your milkweed seeds, they're going to come in a packet. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to show you how I do, do it from start to finish anyway. All right. So, oh, yeah. Okay. All right. If you're lucky, this will happen. See the fluff? That's the fluff up there. Now, if you have children involved, <laughs> there will be fluff everywhere. But if you're lucky, something like this is going to happen because I've just let these age in here. But if you collect them outside and they've already like opened up and gone to fluff, let me show you what you do then. Okay, so you need a, a container with some coins. Okay, a container, lid, and coins. And here, look, see this one's got fluff already coming out. All right, so let me see. I think I need to get, to, get you down a little bit lower so you can see. All right, so I'm going to break this open. Look at that. Okay, this is how you would normally find them. And yes, you can take and, well, kind of rub the, the seeds off if you want to, but I put everything in this container. And this is going to be noisy. Put your lid on. So I'm going to open it just to, to check it. If it all comes flying out, that'll be bad. All right. So see what's happened here. And if I kept going, this will actually, all the fluff will actually knot up. But the fluff has separated from the seed. The seed is down here in the coin. So let me just, I'll do it. I'll do it a little bit more, see if I can get it to come together. All right, here we go. All right, see that? Okay, so most of the seed is now in with the coin and there's my fluff, so it's separated. All right, so milkweed seeds need six weeks of cold stratification and you need a Ziploc bag and a paper towel and some water. So I've already put the water in there. Now I'm just gonna take my seed. Okay, there's my seed. And I'm just gonna dump them in here. I'm gonna label this bag and put it in the refrigerator for six weeks. Now, I so I hope that you have found this video to be fun and because really that was my intention was to share like this really cool thing with you guys about monarch caterpillars and monarch butterflies. Um, realize that they are on the decline for a, just a multitude of reasons. Like I don't, I don't know if we can actually pinpoint um, one specific thing, but I think it's all of the things, you know, from the fact that people are not planting milkweed like they like it used to be around and um, the roadside mowing happens where there is milkweed 
Um, I think pesticide use is a big deal because, you know, if you're spraying for caterpillars, even if you're spraying a natural spray like BT, yeah, it's, it's still, it's going to kill your, your, uh, your monarch caterpillars. So, um, you know, if you want to help them, you can plant some milkweed and reduce your use of spray. And, um, and you know, if you want to do what I do and bring them in and help them complete their life cycle and let them go and y'all happy birthday. So thumbs up if you enjoyed this and, and subscribe so that you can stay in touch and you won't miss out on the next adventure in gardening. See you soon.